lesson four of module one entitled Empowering Students. What routines and procedures should you consider when creating your virtual classroom? One thing you should consider are the norms and the expectations that you want to establish in your virtual learning space. And norms are just how individuals in the group will interact with one another in the virtual space. What are the norms that you want your students to use when they interact with one another, as well as when they interact with you in a distance learning environment? And there is a space on the right where you can jot down your norms. A couple of examples of some norms would be to mute your microphone when students enter Meet or a virtual meeting. Another norm might be to um, for students to not use the chat feature unless given permission. Another norm might be be that students would raise their hand or use the raise hand function if they have a question. So what is an agreement? An agreement should communicate the teacher's expectations for the class. Basically, it's a social contract of the classroom community. And just some considerations for creating this classroom agreement for a blended learning environment would be, first, fewer number, the better. For example, make sure the number is small. You would want to have maybe three to five and no more than five of these teacher expectations. Second, create these with your students. If your students have ownership in the agreement, they are more likely to follow the agreement because they feel a personal attachment. Three is state them positively. Instead of stating don't type in the chat, you would say wait to type in the chat until given permission. Four is to make them specific. Make sure you're, you are not vague whenever you are listing your teacher expectations. Make it very specific so that the student is very clear and they understand what you expect in your classroom. Also, review the agreement often, especially at the very beginning of a virtual meet. It's just a good practice, especially at the beginning of school, to review your agreement or your teacher expectations at the beginning of your virtual meetings so that students are well aware and very familiar with what your expectations are for learning in a digital space. This is a template you can use to write out your classroom norms and your classroom agreement and feel free to use this in your learning management system or in Google Classroom. In the Cult of Pedagogy podcast, nine ways online learning should be different from face-to-face. -face. They explore the concept of the blended learning model versus the traditional classroom. And in that, they discuss that we should devote time to building community and digital competencies. So students need direct onboarding for all platforms that you are going to be using. And they need to understand how to use their learning management system and any digital resources that they would need to use independently. We also need to make sure that we are really streamlining communication with parents and we need to be predictable about that communication. So for example, you might always send a newsletter on Fridays. Any face-to-face -face time you have with your students should be used for active learning, not just a passive lecture. You want to make sure that you simplify and slow down your content. So if you're creating your own videos, make sure you speak at a pace that students are going to understand. Understand. You'll want to make instruction easy to find, explicit, and multimodal. Our digital learners today need things to be in video format. They need imagery, but they also need to see the text. You also want to make sure that you're providing students with ample feedback so that they know where they stand in your class. And give students an opportunity to create. Creating is very important. We don't want them to just be passive learners on this journey. They need to be actively engaged in what they're doing. So there are some structures that can empower student learning. You're going to want to develop a welcome to the week message, a daily agenda or to-do list, and then make sure that, as we've mentioned, you're using a consistent way to access the learning path. So make sure that students can always click on a place and get to their learning path immediately. You want to have a routine for turning in work, routines for accessing feedback and grades, and reflection. So your welcome to the week. Your welcome to the week is just going to be an overview of the expectations that you have for the week. It's going to help make students aware of the content that's going to be covered, any upcoming quizzes, tests, or due dates. It's also a great place to shout out students, announce birthdays, and show examples of exemplary work. For your daily agenda, this is going to be the overview for the learning path for that day, so it will describe the blending learning expectations that students will have. It'll also highlight things that are due that day and the complete 
completion expectations. Accessing the path is very important as well. We want to make sure that you create a routine for the student's learning pathway. It's very easy to start having click fatigue as students progress in a path. So make sure that students can get into their learning pathway in about three clicks. Keep that learning pathway as often as you can above the scroll so students don't have to keep scrolling down to see more things that they have to do. You'll also want to establish a routine for students to check their personal and class calendar. Helping them do that is going to help improve their executive functioning so that they can keep track of where they are in the class and in their day and in their week. Let's take a look at how empowering students might look in a few different platforms. For example, if we go to Schoology, hopefully students would have this already bookmarked somewhere. And as they enter the platform, that would be their first click. They would then navigate to their course for their second and third click and be presented with their learning path right in the beginning so that they can see what they have to do in each station. This would be three clicks in. For a fourth click, if they click on the learning path, this could then take them to a materials area where they would be able to see across the top of the screen what they specifically have to do in each station. Inside of here, you can also embed content to keep them in the lesson, and you can link the assignments for students to turn in their work. So once they're finished with station one, they would just click on the assignment link and submit their information for grading. Canvas would be a similar way. Hopefully they have this bookmarked. They would click to enter their course. And once in their course, they can see their modules organized together. Adding a task list is going to help reduce the number of clicks that students have to use because we don't want them to suffer from click fatigue. Inside of the learning course, they can see their to-do list, embedded videos, and get straight to any discussions that they would need. So the quicker you can get students actively learning and actively engaged in their station rotations, the better it will be. You'll also want to develop routines that students can use to turn in their work. How are they physically going to turn in work, or where will that paper go if they finished it? What's the virtual method that they should use for turning in their work? And then how will students know if they have late work? Is there going to be a notification? Will there be a zero, um, an incomplete? Make sure that you explain to students how that will show up for them. Feedback is really important. How are you going to give students feedback so they know how to access it? How will students communicate with their teachers about their feedback? Will they add private comments? Are you going to direct them to comments inside of a document or comments inside of the LMS? Or are you going to verbally conference with them? And then also give your students a point of reflection. Periodically have students reflect on how they're progressing in their lesson pathway, but also have them pause and think about if they're maintaining the important norms and classroom agreements that you have developed together. For feedback, we want to make sure that we're providing explicit directions about how students can access their grades. This is really important. You are going to want to model how to use the platform. If there's an app, show them how to use the app and show students where to go and how to access grades and information that they need. You're also going to want to build in routines for examining feedback. In the past, we used to just be able to give students their papers back and ask them in real time, go ahead and read the comments that I've left. You want to do the same thing with virtual you want to do the same thing in the virtual space in whatever format of blended learning you choose to apply. Make that part of the daily rotation that students are doing. Finally, you could create a student schedule for students. Have them create a template. Finally, you could create a student schedule. Have a template that students can use and access for themselves to help stay organized. This concludes Lesson 4 of Module 1. Now would be a good time to pause and think. Write down notes for implementation on the Lesson 4 tab in the Blended Learning Blueprint template you copied in Lesson 1 for this module. Here you can jot down notes for implementation on how you want to structure your Welcome to the Week, what you want to do for your daily agenda, how students will access their learning pathway in as few clicks as possible, what routines you're going to use for turning in work, providing feedback, and for reflection.